44,000 fans in Candlestick Park for the seventh and final World Series game see the first scoring action in the fifth inning as Yankee Bill Scourin singles. This is a nip and tuck ball game, a game that decides the title. With Scourin on first, Cleet Boyer singles sharply to left center. The ball is long enough to send Scourin to third as the throw comes into second. Fans see Yankee pitcher Ralph Terry walk and Jack Sanford pitch to Kubik. Scourin scores on the double play ball and that lone run is destined to be the biggest the Yankees scored all season. In the seventh, the Giants' Willie Mays hits a soaring ball to deep left center and Tom Tresh makes a spectacular catch. It's a save that keeps the Yankees in front. Well, Willie McCovey next up smashes a powerhouse into the teeth of the gale that blew all day, and it falls over Mickey Mantle's head for a spectacular triple. The giant fans keep their fingers crossed, but Terry comes through to strike out Orlando Sapina and end the threat. The Giants go down fighting in the ninth as pinch hitter Matty Alou bunts his way on base. Then two men strike out, bringing to bat the mighty Willie Mays, San Francisco's last hope. Here is all of the drama and excitement as Terry pitches and Mays smashes a double down the right field line. Only swift work by Roger Maris prevents Alou from crossing with the tying run, but the Giants are still breathing. McCovey comes up and lines one to Bobby Richardson, who freezes to the ball, and the Yankees remain the world champions. The New Yorkers swarm over pitcher Ralph Terry in jubilation as they prepare to celebrate their 20th World Series victory, a record far ahead of any other team in history. There is no joy in San Francisco except in the Yankee clubhouse. In the seven games, the Yankees were outscored by the Giants 21 to 20, but the New Yorkers came up with the runs that counted. No, it's hail to the champs.